I wouldn't say that it's a, it's only the scrum master's problem. I'd say it's the scrum master's um, job description to teach the product owner and teach the team the importance of the readiness. So the importance of clarity of information, the granularity that we needed. Like you might, you as a scrum master might not be like, just like you said, a subject matter expert on deciding how much information is enough, but it is your job to ensure that the right people are engaging in the right conversation and you are helping them navigate through all of that so because you know you're the only professionally trained facilitator in the room so you know how the dynamics of the conversations work between two different types of personas so it is up to you to create that engaging environment but you're right the driving of the conversation will be done by the product owner with the engineers or the development team if you will yeah no disagreement there absolutely let me back up a few hops uh, for those of you who are not familiar with even the acronym pi so pi stands for program increment PI is a term used in a framework called SAFE, which uh, basically is an acronym, uh, stands for Scaled Agile Framework for the Enterprise. SAFE.com, I think, is the website that you can go and find more information about this. It's, they have a nice little picture of you know, how they organize uh, the, the whole framework. Basically, the short of it is that SAFE for Scaled Agile Framework claims to be a, a framework that uses a bunch of different agile practices, and they help you scale agile practices across a larger enterprise. So they will use combination of Scrum, Kanban, extreme programming, lean principles. They all put it together in, in their own view of what they think is cool. And they say that that's how you want to scale your practices. That's the background on SAFE. In that framework, there is a concept called PI, which is called a program increment. Think of a program increment as a collection of a bunch of smaller time boxes. So according to SAFE, they say it's four to six sprints, if you will. So four to six sprints makes up a program increment. So think of a program increment as an Uber sprint, like a sprint of sprints, if you will. At the start of your sprint and scrum, you plan, right? Which is called sprint planning. Just like that, at the start of a program increment, you're gonna do PI planning. So PI planning is like planning for four to six sprints in advance. Now remember, if you're planning for four to six sprints in advance, then it's predicated on the assumption that for four to six sprints, the stuff that you're planning for is going to remain static. It's not going to change because otherwise your planning effort for whatever long you plan for, whether it's two days or one day, it's kind of redundant. It's kind of overkill, right? So safe from that perspective, assume that the majority of your work is highly planable. And if it's highly planable and it's highly static, then yeah, okay. But four to six sprints, you can plan and then you lock it in. And for four to six sprints, the scope doesn't change. But if that's not the case that you're dealing with and your work is to a large degree unplannable beyond a certain sprint or beyond a certain window, then I would not recommend being held hostage to that kind of rigor. So be careful what you jump into a relationship with, because once you are married to it, then you know it's difficult to come out of that marriage, if you will, because it's going to require a lot of commitment, right? If you go into something, you're going all in, right? Like you do anything like you do everything. You do everything like you do anything. So it's all in. When you go all in, when you come back all out, it's going to be difficult. So just think through the nature of your work. Is it planable? Is it unplannable? Are we going to get a lot of surprises? Is the scope of the work very fluid? Is it dynamic? Is it volatile? Do we need to be held hostage to a certain rigor when we don't understand it? Or should we be a little more lean? Should we be lightweight? Then we'll make our way towards more rigor as we learn more about it. Some things to keep in mind. I would recommend engaging with your agile coach if you have some or any kind of any individual in your company who's championing the agenda for being agile, I would recommend engaging with them for these kinds of things uh, when you do pre PI planning or you know how rigorous the framework needs to be. But coming back to your question, it's basically long range planning, um, GR Smith. It's about planning for you know four to six sprints or so on and so forth. That's what that's why it's called PI planning. Does that make sense? Yes, I would agree. If the majority of your work is not planable, if it's not static, then yeah, absolutely. You don't want to spend the time in doing something that's going to change anyway, right? Um, in that situation, yes. yes, I would agree. One thing I will say, and then you can get in, JR. I know you wanted to get in. This is an interview tip that I would recommend everybody keep in mind. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with having opinions. Of course, it's good to have opinions because opinions generally come from experiences. It's always good to value those things. What I will say, though, is when you get into some sort of an interview, 
try to stay away from any emotions associated with these kinds of frameworks. If it's planable, to what degree, which is kind of what Cosmic was also saying, to what degree is your work planable? And if it's, if you have established a certain pattern, looking at data, then yes, you can put some sort of a rigor around it, whether it's one month, two months, three months, six months, whatever that means, it's for you to decide. If the nature of your work is largely unplanable, then you want less rigor, you want less process. Everything still requires process. For doing anything in some sort of a predictable, robust, scalable, sustainable fashion, you need some kind of process. The only question here is how much process? Is it 15,000 things or is it five things? Is it two things or is it one thing? And you can debate about that. At the end of the day, they're all amazing processes. They're all amazing tools out there. You just need to figure out what is the applicability of this approach to the kind of problem I'm solving. A problem well stated is a problem half solved. Spend a lot of time in stating the problem well. The solution gradually will, will come out as a result of discussions among the group. Thank you.